All right, I was requested, special request, to make a video for Algebra 1, page 1101, and looking particularly at pages 17 and 18. This is about finding the LCM, which stands for Least Common Multiple. And uh, a lot of students get that confused with the greatest common factor. And the least common multiple also becomes the common denominator that we're looking for. And uh, it's one thing to do it with fractions. It's a whole other thing when we're doing it in algebra. It gets a little more complicated. But let's go through a process. I'm going to do a different example, different numbers than what they have in the piece on page, what is it, it was 17? So they have 12, 18, and 25. And uh, I want to take 12, 18, and 45 and just show you, kind of walk through the steps and then uh, do one example using these three terms and then some more complicated ones, all right? And these actually are in the homework, but I'm going to set them up without giving you the final answer. All right, so let's uh, take a look here. <clears throat> We're going to write down what are all the prime factors. So remember, a factor is a number that multiplied together will give us the answer, the product. And um, so there's a couple different ways you could find the prime numbers, but uh, basically you could take this and say 3 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. So we would say the prime factors are 2 times 2 times 3. Okay? 18, whether you start with 2, 2 times 9, or 3 times 6, the 9 or the 6 you could break down. So I'm going to take 2 times 9, 9 is 3 times 3. I'm not showing all these steps because hopefully by this point you know how to find the prime factors. But uh, 2 times 3 times 3 would be 18. And you can check it by going back and multiplying. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 3 is 18. Okay, so that worked. Now let's take 45. 45 is 9 times 5. Okay, and 9 is 3 times 3. So I'm going to say 3 times 3. Whoops, looks like a minus. Sorry about that. 3 times 3 times 5. Now, for the LCM, this is very important, we're going to take every factor that shows up in any of those three lists. Okay? So, what are some numbers that show up here? Are there any 7s here? No. Okay, an 11? No, there's no 11s. Is there a 2? Yes, there's a 2. So, I'm going to include 2 in my LCM. Is there a 3? Yes, there is. Here, here, here. So, we're going to include a 3. And, is there a 5? Yes, there is. Okay? Now we're going to go back, and this is where it gets tricky, but follow, stick with me here. <clears throat> we want to take the most number of times that this particular number, 2, is used in any one list. Okay? Now here it's used once. Here it's not used at all. Here it's used twice. So 2 is the most number of times it's used in any one list. Okay, does that make sense? So I'm not going to do 2 to the third power. I don't say, oh, it's here, here, and here, so I need to use it three times. No. The most number of times it's used in any one number. So twice. 3 is used once here, but it's used twice here. It's also used twice here, but I'm not going to say 3 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 3 to the fifth power. No. I'm going to take it only to the second power. It's used once here, twice, twice. So two is the most number of times it's used in any one list. Five is only used one time. So basically, to get the answer, I would multiply four times nine times five. And I don't have that answer in my head, okay? Doesn't matter. The point is, that would give you a number. That would be your least common multiple. If we were trying to do it with fractions, which we're going to do in the next section, then that number would become your least common denominator for those fractions. All right, so let's take these three terms. These are algebraic terms. So we just have variables. So if I broke this down, this would be like saying a times a times c. This is a times c times c. 6 is 2 times 3 times a times c. All right, so in the LCM, least common multiple, 2 shows up once, 3 shows up, A, what's the most number of times that A shows up? Twice here, once here, once here. So I'm going to use it twice in my LCM. Okay, starting to click. 
How many times is C used? Well, let's see. It's used once here. It's used twice here. And it's used once here. So I need to do C to the fourth power. No. The most number of times it's used in any one list, any one term. So it's used twice here, so I need to use it twice in the answer. All right, and then for your final answer, I would just go ahead and multiply the two times three and get six, and then tack that on, all right? Now here's where it gets a little trickier because we first have to factor these because we need to break it down to the smallest factors possible. Now, let's start with this one, because this one's actually kind of easy. x squared minus 1, and hopefully you recognize that that's the same as x plus 1 and x minus 1. But a lot of times students look at this, and they think, oh, there must be some way to factor it like this. And actually, there's not. This is a little different. There is a common factor, the greatest common factor, which is just x. So we're going to factor x out of the parentheses and have x times the quantity x minus 1. Do you see how if I did distributive property again and multiplied, x times x would be x squared, x times negative 1 would be negative x. All right, now I have all of the factors. What is the LCM? I'm going to take every factor that's used. So x is being used here. It's not being used here, okay? x minus 1 is being used in this one. It's also being used in this one, but I don't list it twice. It only shows up. I only write it once in the LCM because it appears once in both lists. And then I have to include x plus 1 because that one appears in this list even though it's not in that one. All right, so the bottom line rule is every factor that appears in any of the terms has to be in the LCM but it only is used the most number of times that it's used in any of them. All right, let's just set you up on this last one and then see if you can figure this one out. This is the hardest one, I think, in the homework. So let's just try to help you set it up. So if we try to factor this, <clears throat> you see that we're probably going to do 2x and 2x, okay, to get 4x squared. Since I want the last term to be 1, okay, um, we're going to try 1 and 1. And then the middle term needs to be negative 4x and the last term positive 1. So obviously if I do negative times negative, that will give me a positive 1 on the end, okay? Now we're going to do something similar here, but notice we want to end up with negative 3 here. So we're going to start off with putting the 2x in the front of both of these. And then let's try 3, because the only two numbers that multiply together will give you 3 is 3 and 1. So then you're going to try 3 and 1, okay? And then play around with it to figure out where the pluses and minuses go. Now when you do that, you're going to find that one of these terms here is going to be duplicated down here. All right? So then in your LCM, you're going to have three factors. So we know we're going to use this one twice because it showed up twice for this one. And then we have to figure out what the other one is here, the third one, that is going to be part of our LCM because this one is going to be a duplicate of one of these. So again, we don't list it three times, we only use it twice. The most number of times it shows up in any one. Okay, they don't give you a lot of practice on this, but hopefully enough that by the time you score and correct it, you'll feel a little more confident and ready to do the checkup, which comes up pretty quick here.